Alrighty, hello again, this is Trace Majestus, and we're back in Elite Dangerous Odyssey, back to deep space exploration and heading out to the carrier. So let's get in game and get things rolling. Galaxy map. Here's the galaxy map, Commander. All right, sixteen jumps to go. <coughs> Retract landing here. Landing. Hello, Jean Marc. Welcome back. Half G's, two Earth masses. Try CO2 atmosphere. Holy crap, the atmospheric pressure is huge. Um, two thousand twenty-three. Oh god, twenty-nine thirty-seven Kelvin. That's a hot planet. All right. Said geological, right? Yeah. More geos. Oh, there's another.
All right, no life forms in the system. System map. System map. I think that first planet is way too far in to be anything useful. Ah, Adrian Howell, okay. But he only passed through and caught the stuff in the... Eh, you only get that one. All right. Hello, 69 Treesmo. Welcome back. This is an Adrian Howell system, too. star all right nothing particularly useful with the B star Probably bacteria. Two bios there, okay. Squirrel Lords Gaming, welcome back. What are you? Ice World. All right, no possibilities of terraformables. So now we check all the landables. Well, double check that one. Actually, let's check. And now it's okay, so I got two planets to go visit. All right. system. All right.
Hello, Kicksticks. Welcome back. Or welcome to the channel, actually. Alrighty, so let's start off with what I did first. Um, since you missed the beginning of that. Oops. So the first thing I did was use the Discovery Channel, which I, ch Scanner, which I've got mapped. Then, oops, wrong button. I went into the spectral analysis and went through and checked on all of the planets in the system. And then I found two planets that had life forms on them. And this is the first one of those. And so now's the right time for this button. Go into the uh, uh, the screen for launching probes at the planet. Now I have highly engineered probes here. So um, even though this is a, you know, the, the efficiency target is based on standard probes. Standard probes, you can expect to complete a planet of this size in six by utilizing six probes. I have probes with double scanning radius due to engineering, so it's only going to take me three. And through experience, you can explore in any one of the ships in the game. Um, so you're going to want to get yourself, um, here, hold on a sec, let me, come on, go to the, go to the correct panel. All right, so over here on modules, you're going to want to get yourself, first of all, you're going to want to do what you can to get, a, you know, A-rate your gear. Um, and a couple of things you're going to want to get, a detailed surface scanner, um, and a, uh, a vehicle hanger for... Um, surface reconnaissance vehicles. Those are the t two most important things for, um, well, a few most important things for doing planetary exploration, which is one of the fastest ways to earn money in the game. Um, I would suggest, since you're a starting player, learn how to control your ship uh, properly while staying in the beginner's area. Uh, before you try and go out into it, before you try and exit the beginner's area, because once you've exited the beginner's area, you can't go back. Um, but when you do exit the beginner's area, um, first thing I would do is go look up the Road to Riches site, and uh, oh, there's only one thing here. What am I doing? Um, Go get yourself some cash uh, following Road to Riches. Because it is the easiest way to get early cash. Does not take a whole lot of skill. Gets you used to flying your ship and jumping around. And gets you a decent amount of cash. You can actually, if you do Road to Riches for... I don't know, maybe a week, a little more than a week. Yeah, and I mean, this game, it actually takes real skill to fly these ships. Um, not quite as bad as Frontier Pilot Simulator, which is insanely hard for flying ships. Um, but you still have to learn how to fly your ships doing this. Uh, the nice thing about going for exploration first is you don't really have to worry all that much about pirates if you do get interdicted just go to zero throttle let them scan you and they'll go away um, 
because you don't have anything in your hold. Uh, <laughs> So it's safe, it's easy. I don't know anything about Armor 3. Deploy landing gear. Landing gear deployed. Now the other thing you'll notice, especially on these planets with a little bit of atmosphere, you can see you're getting a little bit of wind here. Um, and dropping your gear allows better control at low speeds. But, I mean, as you can see, I'm still getting knocked all over the place. Oops. Nice thing about low speeds, with simple A-rated shields, we don't even need to engineer them. It's enough to uh, take any bump, bumps and bruises. Now, as far as the suit I'm in here, um, this is a, oh, what do they call it? Pioneering suit or something like that? What else? Artemis suit. So I'm in an Artemis suit, uh, which is your exploration suit. I've got a skin on it right now, so it's got the Spectre skin. Um, Yeah, um, nice thing, you know, auto land is nice uh, in the beginning, but you do want to actually learn how to do it yourself. Because uh, it takes up a slot in the ship that can be better used for some other piece of equipment. So long as you take it easy and you're not on a high G planet, um, the only hard thing about planetary landings is actually finding a landing spot, especially if you're trying to land in, in uh, rougher terrain. I mean, this is pretty smooth here. Yeah, I can understand that, and some people do fly better in third person view. Um, but it's well worth getting used to first person view because you need the, you really want to be able to see all the controls in the cockpit. There's just too much information you lose in third person view. Actually, I don't like the angle of that land and area. Alright, this looks like some good. No, those are not. Ah, there's some over there. So the only problem with third person flying in the game is you lose your control, you can't see your control panels. Um, and I don't like that. Or at least the last time I tried third person. Um, I much prefer the first person view.
Although I think for landing, third person might actually be better. I just don't do it. <laughs> Alright, so that takes care of everything on this planet. System map. Well, that's, you know, if that's the way you like playing, that's the way you like playing. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, just didn't work for me. Then again, they probably changed how third person view works. For track landing gear. Ah, okay. So you're used to third person flying to begin with. So yeah, that might be better for you. Yeah, right now the only way I know how to do third person is to go to the external cameras. Um, but I, but then you lose all these instruments. And, uh, Yeah, one, one of the things I've got to do um, relatively soon is um, get myself a new head and eye tracker so that I can look right and left just by using my head. Um, <coughs> I miss having that. Um, being able to look out the side window, just turn and look. Uh, and doing that, the best ones I've found so far, and no, I don't have a product endorsement from them, uh, is the IX head and eye trackers. Yeah, I, I, for a long time, I played with, with a head and eye tracker on this game, but then it, um, Eventually it died, and uh, I just haven't gotten around to replacing it yet. I do miss it a lot, because it takes away a lot from the realism, not being able to turn your head and look. And I really do like the realism in the game, so... At some point, I will, sp I will free up some cash and buy myself another one. And it will be an IX brand because I do like the way theirs works. Oh, I would. I fly, Ho that's all I fly is Hotas. Right now I'm, uh, well, I'm always used in this game the uh, Thrustmaster Warthog. Throttle and stick. I've also got a pair of SciTech pedals. The pedals don't matter as much to me as having a Warthog throttle and stick, just because they're, they're my favorite throttle and stick. Although that in and of itself has more to do with my history than anything else. Oh, well that can be a problem. Um, Although if you have a chair that has, um, you know, any sort of gaming chair, there are attachments you can buy for gaming chairs to attach the throttle and stick to the gaming chair. I currently can't use one of those even though I have a set uh, because of the way my desk is set up right now. But at some point, I will remount my uh, monitor and go oh, laying in your bed playing. Yeah, that won't work. Uh, but at some point, I will 
mount my monitor differently so that I can pull it closer and back my chair up, which will allow me to um, you put move the throttle and stick down onto the chair mount, which will get them in a better position for actually using them. <coughs> Excuse me. Right now they're sitting up on my desk, but that's a little too high. I've kind of gotten used to that, but it would be a whole lot easier on my shoulders if they were actually down and attached to the chair arms. But, like I said, to do that, I've got to remount my monitor. Right now it's sitting up on the desk. Uh, I would actually have to mount it on a swing arm so that it came out further so that the screen would be at the right distance from my head when I back, or from my face when I back up. Um, or back up the chair. But that's for some future day. Not now. <coughs> yeah, I started out with no pedals, but because the uh, uh, Warthog can, uh, Hotas does not have a... Um, a, a twist to yaw function. Uh, foot pedals are really necessary. And I couldn't figure out how to set up the differential throttle to um, make a yaw happen, which is probably just me, but I just wasn't able to get it to work. Deploy landing gear. Landing gear deployed. I don't like the positions that the uh, twist to yaw put my wrists in. Voice attack is um, amazing. And I'm using the Anubis voice pack, which is actually fairly difficult to get at this point because uh, unfortunately Zenual seems to have taken his sight down. Uh, Zenuel is a professional voice actor, and he kind of, he put the um, Anubis voice pack together kind of as an advertisement for his uh, acting skills. And uh, I'm glad I've got it. But unfortunately, he doesn't seem to uh, have it anywhere easily accessible anymore. Hello, Mr. Mad Hatter. Welcome back. There are, of course, a lot of other voice packs out there. I just prefer the Anubis pack. And Zenual, if you ever listen, please bring it back and make it easier to get. <laughs> Two samples down, one to go on this, and then I can look for the bacteria.
Yes. Everything. There is only one game. Doesn't matter if you're solo, open, or private group. It's all the same world. The only difference is the uh, number, the people you're playing with. So right now I'm running, um, I'm running in private group, but that that only means that the only people I interact with are people in my private group, which right now none of them are online. Um, in solo, of course, it's you against the environment. In open world, everybody and their brother is avail can come and see you. Um, that does have its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, there are plenty of people who enjoy ganking new, be new players. Um, so it's, or ganking people who, ba who basically do not have, um, who are not sufficiently good, uh, pilots to, uh, survive their attacks. <coughs> you know, some of them role play it, and, you know, you know, drop, you know, drop, drop a ton of material and I'll let you live and they'll do that um, and other ones are just out there to kill you um, and they don't they, you know they get all of, they get their kicks just killing people no you don't make any more it's all the same And you can switch modes basically any time. Although if you're in combat, it does um, delay your exit, um, which sometimes can get you killed. So right now where I'm sitting here, I'm not in combat. I can just hit escape, exit to main menu, and then continue. I was in private group. Actually, given where I'm at, I guess I can just pop into open. And now I'm playing an open. And it just, I'm in exactly the same spot, exactly the same stuff going on. Basically, it just allows you to experience the game differently. Yeah, nobody out here anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, or actually, <laughs> there are a couple of people out here because. Um, Somebody dropped some data off on my uh, carrier this week. And uh, thank you, whoever did that. I do appreciate the little bit of income that comes out of it. So I very much doubt they're in the same system as me, me because I don't like... I don't even I don't know what day they were at my carrier, but uh, sometime in the past week week and a half, there was somebody dropped off a bunch of exploration data at my carrier. Um, since I do get a small amount of income when they do that, so I know on the weekly when I did the weekly uh, bookkeeping for the carrier that um, somebody had been there. But I have no idea where they are relative to me. It's unlikely they have much in the way of weapons on their ship. So. Because anybody out here is pretty much going to be out here for exploration. That's nice. You must have been offering a decent price for it.
Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> Since they can buy it at anywhere between 50 and 75k per ton, buying at 202 is going to get you filled. <laughs> Pretty quick, too. All right, so I'm finished with this system. So let's go jump on to the next one. Since we've still got plenty of time left. track landing gear. landing gear oh I changed modes I gotta replot galaxy map here's the galaxy map commander all right 14 jumps to go A lot of the stuff you're mining is basically, you know, just mining for credits or mining for missions, mining to unlock engineers. Uh, platinum is one of the most um, commonly mined substances, and that's generally in Omicron Capricorn EB, since there are carriers that frequently go hang out there to buy it from you at a premium price. <laughs> oh, I doubt very much that they mind it either, Mr. Man ha Mad Hatter. Um, you can buy it at around 50k per ton at several stations. It's quite easy to fill up a carrier when you're in the bubble. one station that sells it at a pretty darn good price out there. A lot of the uh, carrier, uh, what do you call it, uh, Star Network carrier refuel operations take off from Colonia and there's a, I think it's Tier maybe? Hold on, I know it shows on Anara. All right, so let's see. I want to buy tritium. Near uh, Colonia. View additional options. Station distance any, price age 30 days, price age any, minimum supply demand, include fleet carriers, use surface, shush you. Search. Not best price. Um, distance. Okay, uh, let's see, that's not a good one. Station, where are you? Let's see, that's not a lot. That's not a lot. That's a carrier. Yeah, it looks like somebody's driving the uh, supply down. 
That's annoying. When I got it, I went to our Moore's Charm in Luktain. This is where I refueled, refueled at the last time I went through. Uh, it's not normally 46 tons available. It's usually about 10,000. Um, Let's see, view additional options, minimum supply demand, 5,000 units, do not include fleet carriers, search. Wow. Yeah, somebody's been... Uh, Somebody's been br buying out everything. The best I see at the moment that one um, but it does look like um, it does look like they're uh, yeah so something's obviously going on out there uh, So like I said, the last time I was was out there um, to refuel, I bought at Luktane, and it really wasn't hard, but uh, it does look like um, there's a run on platinum out there at the moment. But not a run on platinum, a run on uh, tritium. Which is annoying, but I mean, it's economics, I guess. Kaon Surat, okay. System map. A lot easier out there than it is in the bu in the main bubble, yeah. Rocky ice. Okay, so there's going to be nothing terraformable. And nothing has that, so on to the next system.
mean, even the smaller stations are not... Um, oh, I know what I didn't check. Let me first not run into the star, and then I'll check one other thing. is with the station. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's... Uh, looks like people are cleaning Colonia out of Tritium. I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> A water world discovered by Jesse Crothwaite. Okay, 325,000 light seconds out. Yeah. We are, it won't be tonight. Geological. Because I don't have time to fly all the way out there. Okay, so no life forms out there. System scan complete. Everything's at the P star, basically. System map. not terraformable and it's a heck of a long ways out there I think I'm gonna skip this one you know I've got absolutely no idea I don't have a reason to come back uh, at least not yet I was thinking I might come back for the new um, faster than light drive, the new uh, super cruise drive, but um, given the reviews on that and how it works, I just don't have any desire to come back for that. Um, maybe when the new Python is released, maybe I'll come back. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm at least going to mine a bunch of tritium to refill the tritium that's been purchased from my carrier. So that's around a thousand tons, um, which is, I don't know, six or seven days worth of mining. Uh, maybe as much as 10, depending. Ice world. All right. 
ain't nothing in this system worth anything. Once I refill the carrier, I may also um, spend a bunch of time on the Darkwing account and um, unlock the rest of his engineers and such. Because I still have to do that. Which means I'm going to be doing all sorts of different types of gameplay. Um, As I put, have both the um, the ship engineers and the on foot engineers to finish off. <laughs> Nothing good in this system either. All right, on we go. Plus, I haven't unlocked any of the Guardian or other things with them yet, with uh, Darkwing yet, so he's I mean, I got a long ways to go on him. So, I really have no idea how long I'm going to be out here. <laughs> Yeah, the fuel scoop's automatic, you just have to get close enough to the star, on a scoopable star. Not all stars are scoopable, of course. They have to actually produce hydrogen. Since that's what you're scooping. Yes, they can, but I don't recommend that to a uh, relatively inexperienced pilot. Oh, we got bios here.
so gotta go a little further away. Yeah, rough as is, you could get your ship blown up if you do it wrong. All right, let's see what we got going on here. System map. System map. All right, let's start off at the A star. Okay, start back over. I don't think there's going to be any life forms on any of these because there's not even a minimal atmosphere. But you never know sometimes. All right, so there's nothing good at the A star. Ooh, terraformable. What's the distance out to here? Oh, actually, that's not bad. Okay, so that guy's terraformable. And he has life forms. So we're going to go see him. Life form there. Can't have one there. So one, two, three, four life forms out there. All right, we don't have enough time for all of that, but we'll go get the first planet done. What am I looking at here? Only nine jumps to the carrier. We could be at the carrier as early as tomorrow. Especially if I go a little extra and finish off this system. Overtime! Yeah, invisible bacteria could be a problem. Um, we'll see. Oh, the other reason there's a whole lot of carriers in and around Luktane is Luktane is a um, carrier depot. So there's always a bunch of carriers around there. I think it's the only one out in Colonia.
Oh, Colonia itself has one too? Okay. I know Luctane had one because that's where I refit last. At least I'm pretty sure. Of course, my memory can be a bit wonky at times. But I know I didn't go to Colonia itself. this valley or whatever it is will do. Ninety-nine percent likely to be bacterium. I don't know whether it's going to be Cerebrus or something else, but I won't doubt it. Deploy landing gear. into the planet. It's Aurelius. It's the one that looks like carnations.
<laughs> I think you may be right. System map. All right, three more to go, one on each planet. Retract landing gear. Landing gear to trip. Maybe we'll find out. I mean, these planets get rapidly colder as I go further out. And I've still got three more to go. If they get difficult to spot, I'll end up having to stop and uh, continue it tomorrow. Because it is a work night. So we'll see. If it goes quick, great. If it doesn't, uh, well. Tomorrow is the next day, as a poo would say. And again, he'd also say, have a nice day. See you in hell. <laughs> he had some of the best lines.
probably landing here. Landing gear. going to be hard to find. Stands out like a sore thumb. I didn't actually look. I didn't expect a stratum. System map. Yeah, biological one. Dick Monicus. I love your names for things. Always a good thing. And one th the other thing I like about these, you don't have to go very far between samples. And another good thing, they're really easy to spot. Against most planetary surfaces. Not all, but most. All right, two planets down, two to go. System map. Track landing gear. System map. <coughs> First football fall by me. I get all firsts on it. No one's been here. I've had a few systems I've been through tonight that have been uh, where well, the system was discovered by somebody else and, you know, 
I got the first scan on the planet, first foot fall, fall on the planet, and um, you know, scanned the life forms. But somebody else had been through and uh, used the uh, FSS on the system. <coughs> so they got the initial discovery. I just got all the scanning and mapping. So cash flow wise, this has been a pretty good night, or at least collecting of the data. I won't get the payday until I get to my carrier, but that's not all you know, that far in the future anymore. <coughs> Okay, bacteria only on this one. Yep. The first time, first time I came out here was uh, in Horizons. Um, well, no, first time I came to this location was in Horizons. Um, <coughs> first time I went to the went to Beagle Point was pre-Horizons, I think. So whenever did whenever uh, Distant Worlds One was deploy landing gear. Landing gear deployed. The Distant Worlds 1 was my first deep space exploration uh, adventure. Maybe 
you over here? <coughs> Stop them. Stupid lobbles. Ah, there we go. So it's merely scarce, not uh, difficult to see. Okay. the second one. And there's the third one. System map. We track landing gear. Landing gear and on to the last one.
Okay. <clears throat> see what's here. Do we have bacteria, which is what I most likely will be here, or something else? Bacteria. Okay. Deploy landing gear. Sample to find. Well, 
There we go. Fun peaks to land on in sight. Okay. So we'll just leave it here. Alrighty. <clears throat> so we actually completed a bunch of jumps tonight. Um, and only have, uh, what is it, nine to go? Nine jumps to go to reach the carrier. Um, so we've been... Uh, Going at this uh, through 268 sessions over the past, oh, I don't know, year and a half or so. And we may very well reach the carrier this week. So, almost there. Alrighty, so at this point I'd like to thank everyone who came along for the ride this evening. It was great having you all along. In the stream chat, we have Jean-Marc, 69, Trismo, Squirrel Lords, Gaming, uh, Kick Sticks, and once again, welcome to the channel, Kick Stick, Kicks Sticks. Um, glad I could help you with uh, some of your questions. And we have Mr. Mad Hatter. I think that's everybody. So um, thank you guys for joining me in the stream chat. It's great having you all along, as always. Hey, why don't I do one other thing before I go? I haven't done this in a while. Let's kick that off. So we'll put me up there. Because I can do that. Alrighty, so... At this point, we are going to leave things here. Nine jumps to go. We'll pick it up tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's all for now. This is Trice Majestus. Signing out.